Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. What's even more satisfying than quitting on the spot? Of course, the long game. Well played by our OP in the first story. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. I'm in the wrong line of work? Guess you're right. I was working as a restaurant manager at a very seasonal place. It does over 50% of yearly revenue in a 15-week period. I was the only manager on payroll, but the place ran just fine without me for a day or two. I mostly counted money and placated angry tourists. Story. I asked my boss for a day off, even if I could just switch which day of the week I had off to attend a family party. He said no. When I pressed him again, he launched into a tirade about the busy season. You shouldn't expect a single day off. You knew the job was demanding for these 15 weeks. And the kicker on top, if you expect a day off, you're in the wrong line of work. So I trundled through that season, then the long, slow season, during which my salary stays the same and they paid me to do very little. Two weeks before busy season, I hand in my resignation. I said, this year, I expect a day off. Side note, my replacement ran that place into the ground. Serves them right. And our second story. Entitled mom tells a volunteer that he's fired. So two years ago, my school asked all the students if they wanted to do some volunteering for a food bank, and I said yes. On the day that I did volunteering, I was alone with the teachers at the little stand that we had while everyone else were at the entrances of the supermarket giving bags for the people to fill with food. The idea was for them to deliver the bags at the stand, but most people gave them to my friends in the entrances, so I had to go there from time to time and take them to the stand. We all had shirts saying that we were volunteers, but I had a jacket over it because it was cold. One of the times I went to one of the entrances, the shopping cart that I used to transport the bags was totally full, and when I was going back to the stand, Entitled Mom gets close to me with two full bags of food, and the conversation begins. E.M. Here, take them, giving me the bags. Me. Sorry, but my cart is full. EM. I don't care, take them. Me. Sorry, but I already told you that my cart is full. Leave the bags there with my fr- EM cuts me off and starts screaming, catching everyone's attention. I know the manager of your company for a long time, so take my bags now or else I'll get you fired. My friends who were close started laughing at her. Me. I knew where this was going. Okay, call him. She makes a fake call and says, EM. He says you're fired. Me. The problem is, I take off my jacket and show her my shirt saying volunteer with big letters on my back. Then I walk away while everyone around laughs at her. Just because she Googled the owner of the company doesn't mean she knows him. And our next story. Middle-aged woman has fit when asked to move from my seat because her son wants to sit there. So I'm a bus driver trainer. I basically sit in the seat directly across from the driver, who's usually very nervous and has no clue where to go. So I was training a driver and we were doing route I-11A at about 1650 on a Friday. I should point out I'm not very old, in early 20s. I'm the youngest at my company, but have still worked there longer than most other drivers due to high staff turnover, usually due to drivers getting assaulted and fearing work. As usual, the bus was packed with business people. About the fifth or sixth stop, a middle-aged woman who looked like she was on crack got on with her teenage son. She had the typical speak-to-the-manager haircut, but it appeared she hadn't washed in weeks. Now, I'd get up every now and then to point out a hidden corner or just to point out where to wait for a connecting bus coming from the other side of the road. As we pulled up, I sat back down in my seat. My seat had a cloth cover that I had pinned on and my backpack was on the seat and I had my high-vis jacket hung over the top. She got on and tap on with her card, under 18's free so the sun didn't pay. I assumed she would just go and find a handrail to hang on to. Instead, she just stood in the driver area in front of the yellow safety line with her son. The driver said in a shaky voice, Um, excuse me, I need you to stand behind the line just in case I need to break suddenly. Lady, where do you expect me to stand? With all the other people? Driver, um, yes, that's where you need to stand. She wasn't moving anywhere, so I decided to step in. M, 
Excuse me, ma'am, you need to stand behind the yellow line or we won't be able to depart from this stop. Lady in a snobby voice, and who are you? Me. My name's OP and I'm the senior driver at operator's name. I'm in charge of training this driver and I need you to stand behind the yellow line. Lady, so what does that mean? Do you expect me to stand? There aren't any seats for me and my son? Me. Well, unfortunately, ma'am, it is rush hour and lots of people are going home. Lady, can I just sit in your seat and you go stand with the others? I'm very pissed at this point, as we're not allowed to depart if there are customers in the red zone and the OTR, on time rating, was ticking away. At this point, we were 3 minutes and 55 seconds late, which we still consider on time, but we had a tight connection and I didn't want to start I-12 late, as it's really hard to make up time on the run. Me. Unfortunately, I need to be here so I can see where we're going so we don't get lost. Lady. I want a seat. Me. This bus is very full, but it'll start emptying out in a few stops, but if you stand there, we won't be going anywhere. The lady shakes her hair and mumbles something about how rude I am and how the bus shouldn't be this full. We continue on for a few stops and everything's going fine. We're approaching a street that's hidden by a bush, so I get up to point out where the corner is. I remain standing until we've cleared the corner and I turn to sit down. I'm shocked to see the lady and her son sitting in my seat looking at me with a smug look on her face. Me. Unfortunately, I need you to move from there. That's my seat, and I need to ensure that I can see where we're going. Lady. Can't you see my son needs to sit down? He's a very good boy and works so hard at school, he deserves to sit down. Me. Ma'am, I'm not going to ask you again. I understand your son may be a star student, but I need to sit there. This is when I noticed she'd moved my backpack and had put it on the floor. My blood was boiling at this point. The son who'd been sitting facing away from me got up and went and stood with the others, much to his mom's disgust. Me. If your son needs the seat so badly, why did he just get up? The lady starts making head shakes at her son, trying to get him to come back. Me. Ma'am, if you don't get up, I'll have to ask you to leave the vehicle. This got her attention. She glared at me and said, Are you effing kidding me? Me. No. And I promise if you use that language again, you will have to get off. Lady. I don't care. I'm not effing moving. And you can eff off. I turned to the driver and gave him a nod. As part of our protocol at the driver's discretion, there is a button which immediately notifies the transit officers that there's a passenger that needs to be removed or dealt with. He pushed it and turned to me, giving me a nod and a half a thumbs up. At this point, our OTR was around 7 minutes late, and the passengers were becoming extremely annoyed. For this reason, I rang the TOs and told them where to meet us, a couple of stops down the road. So much to my dismay, we continued on with the woman sitting in my seat on her phone, scrolling through her Facebook, muttering about disrespect in the youth these days. A couple of minutes passed, and the transit officers came into view. I looked over at the driver, and he looked back and smiled. We pulled up, and Terry, the longest-serving T.O., got on. Terry. Hello, O.P. What seems to be the problem? Me. The lady sitting there's taken my seat, and when I asked for it back, told me to F off and how she's not effing moving anywhere. Terry looks over to the lady who was listening to the conversation. Lady. No, I did not. That idiot's lying. I would never tell anyone to F off or use that language in front of my son. I want him removed from the bus and fired immediately. I look over at her clearly confused as the other customers tune in to see and watch the event unfold. Terry, which one's your son? He asks the lady. Lady, that one over there, she says and points to the child holding onto the rail behind me. Terry walks over and says to the kid, Unfortunately, your mommy has been very rude today and she's going to have to get off. You can stay on if you like, but I think it'd be better if you went with her. He agreed and, without a drama, walked off and sat on the bench at the stop. The lady was shocked at this and lost it at her son, calling him a effing idiot. She then proceeded to stand up and get off. I thought fantastic, but she grabbed her kid and proceeded back onto the bus. I walked up with Terry and told her in my most authoritative voice, Ma'am, you must get off now. She looked at me in disgust and proceeded to gather spit in her cheeks and suddenly let it rip right into my face. 
Fortunately, I had my sunnies on, and that stopped it from going in my eyes, but she was then dragged off the bus by Terry and the other officer, where she was arrested and charged with battering and banned from the bus for five years. I later had a blood test to check for any possible diseases, but came up clean. I do not tolerate disrespect from anyone, and using your son as an excuse to get the seat that was clearly mine infuriates me. This was satisfying to read. I'm glad you didn't cave into her demands and she got booted off. Poor kid with a mom like that, though. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.